Hi guys, it is actually a pretty nice day here in the end times and Doomsday Trailer South in South Austin, Texas. It's time to get back to work guys. It is Monday morning, January 6, 2015. Our first real work day in the new year. And so I'm doing what I try to do every Monday morning. This is the first one of 2015 and this is my economic meltdown roundup rant that I bring you every week where I go on to the pages of the mainstream media to bring you more evidence that what is good for this economy, this global industrial oil soaked fossil fueled economy is bad for this planet and everything on it and before I dive in to uh, the Yahoo News business page I just want to take a brief detour over to Virunga National Park in the Congo which is ground zero for, for anybody who, who has any confusion about how the fossil fuel industry, the oil companies, completely own every government on this planet from the Congo to the United States and own both sides of the playing fields, whether it's Congo Army and Rebels or the Republicans and the Democrats. I want to give kudos to my hero, my Humpty Dumpty tribe hero, Leonardo DiCaprio for bankrolling this excellent documentary which damn well better win the Academy Award for documentary for 2014 called Virunga, looking at all of the various threats to the last remaining population of mountain gorillas left on planet Earth who are in the crosshairs of every possible <coughs> side of what's going on on this planet. And uh, anyway, I could easily do a whole rant. I'm just going to play a little bit of the trailer to uh, whet your appetite and strongly advise you to go on Netflix and educate yourself about what is happening on this planet from some goddamn volcano in the Congo rainforest right on up to Main Street USA. Take it away, Netflix and Leonardo DiCaprio. We think that we have a problem. We think we have a problem. Companies are exploring for oil. I came here to cover the security situation. I was sworn in to ensure that Virunga National Parks protected. Oil companies have a reputation for controversial ventures. Yeah. Efforts are focused on the national park. In the past, it has brought a lot of violence here. Everyone wants their slice of the cake. This isn't a war yet, but it could be soon. Th this is not a war yet. Uh, I, I got one thing to say to that. That was bullshit. <laughs> Why don't you talk to one of those damn gorillas in Virunga National Park uh, about what is and what is not a war. It, it is a full-scale war against this planet. It is a war against those gorillas and it is a war against your ass, buddy. I anyway, I'll probably have more rants about uh, Virunga, the, the epicenter, the poster child of what is going on on this planet. Although, of course, it's the same story going on uh, everywhere else on the planet. Anywho, but let's dive in to the pages of the mainstream media, in this case, Yahoo News, this Monday morning. And let's just take a romp, continue our romp around a collapsing planet. Let's go over to Karachi from Virunga 
volcano to Karachi. Not even sure where that is. I think it's in Pakistan. Karachi's defensive mangrove barrier faces triple threat. Hmm. Triple threat. Yeah, try a quintuple threat. Thick mangroves have long protected Karachi, southern Pakistan's sprawling metropolis from battering by the Arabian Sea. But pollution, badly managed irrigation, and years of illegal logging have left this natural barrier in a perilous state. Yes, it has. Experts fear that loss of the natural barrier formed by the mangroves could put the city of 20 million people at greater risk from violent storms and even tsunamis. There you go. Uh, let's see, where have the, the mangrove uh, forest already is a shadow of its former self from about one and a half million acres a hundred years ago now is barely about 300,000, about one-fourth, so 75 percent of the mangrove forest has already fallen. And where is that 75 percent gone? Well, like every other mangrove forest on planet Earth, the rest have fallen victim to illegal loggers, pollution from nearby industry, and changes to the river flow caused by irrigation upstream on the agricultural plains. Yep, fishermen who have made a livelihood from the fish and self shellfish that shelter in the mangroves have warned about their decline for years. But as they're bitching, they're still cutting it down themselves for firewood. This is the planet nibbling versus the planet eaters. Karachi is Pakistan's biggest city and economic and industrial heart. The rapid growth of factories, huh, has contributed to the pollution in the delta <clears throat> near a power plant east of the city. The mangroves are dry and withered, robbing fish of their spawning grounds and angering this mangrove hugger, quote, I really cannot understand why you would attack the mangroves. It is stupid. It is like emptying your neighbor's stomach to fill your own. And then you get down to the bottom, but there is some hope, a drive to replant the mangroves has seen them slowly regain some of the losses. Quote, it, the planting is going very well. There are very few areas in the world where the mangrove cover is increasing and Pakistan is one of them. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. Okay, long as we're over there talking about sort of talking about uh, seafood in Asia. Let's check in with the annual bluefin tuna auction <coughs> going on over there in Japan. We hear this every year. What was it three or four years ago where that one bluefin tuna sold for a lot? What was it, like a half million dollars? Well, the winner this year, the winner, or should we say the loser, in the Bluefin auction nets $37,000. A giant 
bluefin tuna sold for more than $37,000 in the first auction of the year at a Tokyo fish market on Monday as Japan faces growing pressure to cut back on consumption of the threatened fish. This is the 380 pound tuna coming in at $37,480. As the proud buyer said, I am satisfied with buying the best one. It has a good shape and great fat. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, <clears throat> the growing popularity of Japanese sushi worldwide has stoked demand for uh, the blue And you remember when when that president when our planet saving president Barack Obama was over there in Japan what is the first thing he did when he got there he met up with, with, with that goddamn little dictator over there the, these two little dictators and, and what did he stick in his face with the cameras rolling was bluefin tuna sushi there is there is Barack Obama's concern the auction came as Japan, the world's largest bluefin tuna consumer, faces growing calls for a trade ban on the fish, which environmentalists warn is on its way to extinction. In November, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature updated its red list of threatened species warning that surging global demand for the fish was placing unsustainable pressure on the species. Do you think so? And as long as we're talking about uh, unsustainable pressure on a species, let us talk about unsustainable pressure on a planet and, and this is my broken record rant how many times have I had this one about number one about the global beef industry we just talked about the global seafood industry let's go which is why this eco Nazi does not eat seafood now we go over to Associated Press to find out why this eco-Nazi does not eat beef, but does eat pork and chicken. Before we talk about pigs and cows, let's talk about, I mean pigs and chicken, let's talk about the beef cow. New diet guidelines might reflect environment cost. Hmm. For years the government, we're talking this is only the US government, for years the US government has been issuing guidelines about healthy eating choices. Now a panel that advises the Agriculture Department is ready to recommend that you be told not only what foods are better for your own health, but for the environment as well. That means when the latest version of the government's dietary guidelines come out, it may push even harder than it has in recent years for people to choose more fruits, vegetables, nuts, whole grains, and other plant-based foods at the expense of meat. But you better believe uh, the reception this idea is getting. Uh, the beef and agriculture industries are crying foul, <coughs> saying an environmental agenda has no place in what has always been a practical blueprint for a healthy lifestyle. Yep. Uh, 
let's see where do we have some quotes and as this attack uh, appears to take at least partial aim at the beef industry a study by the journal proceedings of the national academy of sciences last year said raising beef for the american dinner table is more harmful to the environment than other meat industries such as pork and chicken the study said that compared with other popular animal proteins beef produces more heat trapping gases per calorie puts out more waste polluting nitrogen takes more water for irrigation and uses more land so anyway they i'm going to put the link to all these stories I, i've already had several rants but here i go again here i go again the reason this eco nazi eats pork and chicken but not beef Okay, beef's hoof print on the environment. A 2014 study showed that raising beef cattle for the U.S. diet is more harmful to the environment than other meat industries. And of course, what's good for the U.S. is good for every other uh, country. Raising 1,000 calories of Animal-based food takes about, so this is looking at 1,000 calories, 1,000 calories of chicken, 4.1 square meters. 1,000 calories of pork, 5.3. 1,000 calories of beef, how about 1466 this is what I'm saying, that a thousand calories of pork or chicken is a hell of a lot closer to a thousand calories of potatoes or carrots than it is to beef. Let's look at water, liters of water, basically quarts of water. For 1,000 calories of poultry, 145 liters of water. Pork, 186 liters. 1,000 calories of beef, how about 1,642 liters? A anyway, I, 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 I could go on with this. I've had this rant before. I will put the link. You can go on to uh, greenhouse gases, nitrogen, blah, 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 that you better believe the meat industry has fought for years to ensure that dietary guidelines do not call for eating less meat. It, the National Cattlemen's Beef Association sent out a statement by doctor and cattle producer Richard Thorpe calling the committee biased and the draft meat recommendations absurd. The American Meat Institute issued a statement calling any attempt to take meat out of a healthy dietary pattern stunning and arbitrary. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, this is Michael Jacobson of the Center for Science in the Public Interest said the idea of broader guidelines is not unprecedented. Quote, you do not want to recommend a diet that is going to poison the planet, he said. Yes, anybody, anybody recommending a diet that includes beef or seafood. They should have looked at the thin print of, uh, of seafood. Anybody recommending beef or seafood in your diet is recommending a diet to poison the planet, which is exactly what the beef and seafood industries are all about. 
Okay, let's see. Let's go over uh, to China, to Beijing, China, to look at air pollution in China, which I can also uh, pull out my, my bullshit story of the day. <clears throat> Beijing dangerous smog down 4% in 2014, uh, according to the government. Air pollution in Beijing dropped slightly last year, municipal authorities said. Come on now, that ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. Although levels of the most dangerous small particulate matter remained more than three times the internationally recommended limit. <coughs> China's cities are often hit by heavy pollution blamed on coal burning by power stations and industry as well as vehicle use. And it has become a major source of discontent with the ruling Communist Party. Alright, so how did it break down the notoriously sm smog-clogged capital had 93 days of what the Chinese government calls excellent air quality last year, 22 days more than in 2013. There were 45 days of heavy pollution, down by 13 days from 2013. That was bullshit. Anyway, and they and they talk about uh, you know I was I was laughing about this ease earlier when they had this uh, big economic forum with these planet eaters uh, from all over the planet meeting over there in November. In November, authorities enforced a host of anti-pollution measures ahead of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation, the APEC Forum, when Chinese President Xi Jinping hosted leaders from the United States, Russia, and Japan, among others. The briefly clear skies were popularly dubbed Apex Blue by online commentators mocking their temporary nature. After the uh, summit was over, as smog levels crept back up, Authorities abruptly ordered one of China's most popular air pollution reporting apps to remove independent data provided by the U.S. Embassy, uh, which of course, the U.S. Embassy, uh, <laughs> am, am I actually getting ready to say that the U.S. Embassy was reporting the real statistics uh, of what was really happening with, with uh, Beijing, Beijing air quality and uh, the Chinese government shut that down real quick. You better goddamn believe when the U.S. Embassy pushing their bullshit indicator button Anyway, let's wrap up. Uh, let let uh, anybody who claims your old your old doomsday prophet never has good news. <coughs> we have some good news for U.S. automakers as strong December sales cap solid year for U.S. automakers. Good, it is a good year for the Planet Eaters. U.S. automakers reported strong domestic sales in December, capping solid annual growth. 
Yep, yep, yep. GM said it had the best December in seven years with a 19% rise. Year on year on year rise, let's see. So GM putting 2.94 million new uh, vehicles on the road for the month and the year. GM's Buick and GMC truck and SUV divisions led the gains. What a surprise. Ford, the number two automaker, said it enjoyed its best December in nine years, although they were about the same as last year with 2.48 million new Fords hitting the streets. Let's see. Chrysler said its December came in 20% over last year with a little more than 2 million new Chryslers hitting. So what are we up to? Just between these three guys, about 7 million in this country alone, these three automakers putting 7 million new vehicles on the road. Gee, volume gains for all three U.S. automakers were strongest in the truck and SUV categories as cheap gasoline continues to mitigate the extra cost of owning the low mileage vehicles. There you go. December sales for the industry appeared better than analysts had predicted and company officials forecast rising sales throughout 2015 as the price of oil uh, is hovering at $50 this morning. There you go. Quote from some GM uh, economist, quote, car buying fundamentals remain strong and we expect higher industry sales in 2015. Good for the U.S. automakers. Good for the clueless moron SUV buyers. Bad for the planet. Anybody who does not understand the connection between record U.S. auto sales and Chinese auto sales and Indian auto sales and Brazilian auto sales and Sub-Saharan African auto sales. And I could go on with this list. Uh, obviously, I'm failing to reach you. We're having a failing to... Failure to communicate. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up my first 2015 economic meltdown roundup rant here on Monday morning, January 6, 2015. Get out on my 20, now what is it, 24, 25 year old gas second bicycle and pedal up to Bank of America to bank my rent check from my real estate investments so I can live another month in the end times as I prepare to get on a gas-sucking airplane and head to the Virgin Islands for the winter where I will try to bring you this rant next Monday morning from the sunny Virgin Islands for this rant Bye, guys.